All right, so we're doing a little bit something different today. I'm gonna show you what I eat for breakfast. Oatmeal, goji berries, banana. All right, first thing, got my little bowl here, my food scale. I always weigh out exactly what I'm gonna be eating. So I have a very light breakfast, to be honest. So if you can see here, it literally says 36 grams of one serving. So that's one fourth of a cup which people could just do one fourth of a cup, but I don't even know what a one fourth of a cup is. So to be more accurate, I'm gonna weigh 36 grams on this little plate here. Bam, 37, no problem. One little extra gram, one extra little carb. <laughs> 36, so this amount, oh, <laughs> this amount of food equates to 140 calories, which when you look at the fats, 2.5 gram fats, you got 25 grams of carbs and roughly about four grams of protein. So that's exactly what I'm putting and I'm gonna be logging that into my fitness pal. You can see here, I'll go in, hit log food. Here's my breakfast. And I'm gonna go and add oatmeal, which I've already added it in here. So steel cut oats, boom, add. And now it's added in my list and what you can do is check into the nutrition you can see that's like the goal numbers where you want to, it's, it's like, it's like making money or like playing a video game where your goal is to hit these three exact numbers. Just like what I track is protein, carbs, and fat. So my goal is pretty accurate of what I've been eating is, you know, usually hundred to 110 fats, roughly 400 to 500 carbs, and then about 170 protein. Um, that's usually my daily intake of what I eat for the day. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, cut the bananas, put one, one uh, tablespoon of um, peanut butter, and you can see there. I do half a serving, I'm gonna do a full two, a tablespoon. And then adding goji berries. And now we wait. All right, while the oatmeal is cooking, I'm gonna boil some eggs as well, just to have that extra protein on the side. So a quick tip for boiling eggs, uh, if you like the consistency where the yolk is basically runny and, and soft, the perfect thing is when it's boiling, turn off the stove and then you put a lid on top and you give it about five minutes. Once it's done, pour out the water and then you can uh, you know, put in cold water slash ice water and then eventually you'll get a nice, perfect boiled egg. Done, pour this bad boy in. Some ground cinnamon here. Let's see if it's gonna focus, yep. That's a little kick, you know, it doesn't really do too much, but I like it because oatmeal tastes like tree bark, dude. Honestly, I don't really like oatmeal that much, but when you add that additional stuff, like, yeah, use this kind of knife. It's just easy, you know? Slicing and dicing. Oh, shh. It's okay. I already know the macros for bananas. It's about 80 grams. Let's see if I get to tear it, but I like to just slice and slice and them, dice them. And then can't forget this guy here. So I put it at zero and it says to do right here about 33 grams for two tablespoons. I like to do just one. I don't want too much, too much peanut butter. So I get a little scoop of dupe, like a, like a little turd. Yeah, not, not so appetizing, but here you go. So 15, bam, right on the dot, close to 16, it's fine. Not a big deal, okay. I got that 16. So yeah, I actually should have put the peanut butter first because I usually like to mix it inside the oatmeal. So I'm doing a little stir stir. Yeah, it doesn't look the greatest, but when you stir it a little bit. The last is goji berries. So we can do 14 grams worth. There you go, perfect. This is the final dish. Macros right there. All right, so onto the last bite of the oatmeal and got three eggs, some salt and pepper, and uh, here's the macros. And yeah, if you're wondering why there's all this pink stuff, it was actually my mom's birthday three days ago. So we got like flowers and stuff for her. Um, but yeah, we're gonna head to the gym now. I just pumped gas and man, it's, it's beautiful out today, clear blue skies and it was like raining for like the past two to three weeks. So it's, it's, a, 
it's really beautiful. Like, I feel like there's just so much life today and I'm like super excited for today's gym session. We're doing the second chest and back uh, hypertrophy day. Cause like I said, I, I work out five times a week and I do chest and back, legs, and then shoulders and arms, chest and back hypertrophy, meaning like sculpting, making sure I'm doing more, uh, you know, squeezing and filling out the muscles and then leg day. So five days a week, that's my training right now. Uh, and like, I'd, I'd probably say chest and back is my favorite exercise to do in general. But overall, like I love all the training days. Like it's hard to, to hate it. Obviously when you're not really feeling energetically ready for it, or maybe you're just like not in the mood and get the best sleep. But even then when I go in and work out, like I just get in this like trance state where nothing matters and all I'm doing is just trying to lift the weight up and then seeing the progression that you first started doing the weights the week previous to what you were doing and you see you're increasing like that's like there's no better feeling than that to be honest because you just see progression in that aspect where you know you want to obviously grow you want to have a goal in mind where you're pushing yourself and when you see those goals happening in real time it's it's surreal because like you don't see the progress two weeks in three weeks in but now that it's been a whole month that i've been recording and also just like really back at it training like fully focused after a month i'm like okay my body looks a little different i can tell i'm I'm, I'm starting to fill out a little bit more. I'm starting to get stronger. And uh, yeah, it's just the, the progress is just like launching off. And that's mainly as long as you know what you're doing. And maybe that's something that I do want to talk about where like when you first start your lifting journey, I would say about like the first six months to almost like give or take a year and a half. I was pretty much going into the gym not knowing what I was really doing. I was following the, the uh, back then in like 2013, like social media wasn't that big and there was no information about like bodybuilding or lifting. So you would go to bodybuilding.com. That was like the OG uh, website that people would go and buy their supplements. And um, yeah, that's like where you would have all the information of you know how to train what workout regimens all those things and i was following the first thing that popped up was of course the the infamous bodybuilder arnold schwarzenegger so he was like the icon still is till this day to be honest but uh, a lot of like google articles would show his workout regimen and i pretty much just started looking at his training um but he did like two days or two two sessions in one day which obviously like i was like that's overkill for me uh, but I, I i started to adapt to some of his workouts which is the chest and back day pretty much um but before i even did that i did the standard um typical bodybuilding regimen which i think most people are familiar with which is um you know chest tries back buys legs shoulders um yeah i think that's like the normal training um, regiment that i think is very popular and that's what i did for a while and then eventually i started just switching it up finding things that i liked and um, over time it came to a point where i kind of started like plateauing like i didn't really know how to increase weight because i would try to attempt a heavier weight than i should have and I would only get like three or four reps. And then like, I just like, oh, I'm not getting any stronger. Like, why am I not like improving? Why am I not any, like, why am I not even increasing my own strength? Uh, but luckily I ran into one of my good friends, the name's Vlad. 
randomly met him at 24 hour fitness and uh oh let me uh should i fix the the lighting it looks a little a little dark in there huh i lost my train of thought but <laughs> uh I, ho I hope i can get back to where i was at so yeah when i first started my lifting journey the first six months to like a year and a half i i, I was just going in training and like making sure that i would end up being tired at the end of my session sessions but i didn't know how to like do it the right way where i was able to measure my progress because you kind of just go in and hit whatever machines um hit different variations and like tr always trying something a little bit different maybe sticking to the same workout for a little bit and then trying something new which in hindsight it works as long as you're always pushing yourself like to the best of your abilities but throughout my years of lifting um i mean it's been what 10 years now since i've, I've basically have been training for quite some time you know I, I went on and off but there was a period where i met my good friend vlad uh, at 24 hour fitness and he he pretty much was getting coached by a uh, so uh, by a natural bodybuilding coach um in in that uh, what, do you, what do you call it in that uh, community you know there's obviously a different community where we prefer to stay natural and then there's other coaches who you know don't do non-natty shows which i think either or works it just depends on what you want um but i i'm, I'm sticking to being natural uh, i want to be able to pull uh, push myself to the best uh, of my abilities uh, naturally so it's gonna be pretty fun doing that um but yeah, I met my buddy who pretty much got coached at that time. And there was not really many coaches at the time. And they were really like ahead of its time where they had a lot of, they, they did a lot of science. They had like books that you can read and they really taught you the fundamentals behind progressive overload and what your training regimen should look like, um, what dieting looks like, how to count your macros, all this crazy stuff. And I pretty much, was taken as like a, an apprentice almost. And my, my friend literally walked me through this whole process. And for pretty much two to three years, I was locked in, focused, did everything to the best of my abilities, following a program, sticking to the program, tracking exactly how many sets, what the weights were, and always referencing back every single week on those numbers. And it's always progressively increasing. So, yeah, I think first, don't don't uh, get so complicated in the beginning process when you first start lifting, because when you first start, you're pretty much a, a, a sponge. You can literally grow six to 15 pounds of muscles in a span of a year when you first start. And then eventually, that's when things starts to get a little bit more difficult. And that's when you're going to need to find someone, a coach who can teach you and, and give you the proper guidelines on how to, you know, work smart, um, learn the nutrition aspect of things, and then uh, finding the right workouts that, uh, that work for you. And then from there, like, I, I was able to learn and then uh, I, I pretty much just became self-taught at that point where taking all that information in, you pretty much have a good idea on how your body works. And then, you know, you're always going to be able to consume a lot of new content that comes out from, you know, popular bodybuilders who come up with new sciences or new trainings. And then you can just kind of nitpick what feels right for you. And then you just go all in, you know. I think that's that's all it really takes and we are just about to get to the gym soon so uh let's get it started again we're doing chest and back today hypertrophy same exact machines as you seen in my last video um but we're definitely going to be increasing in weight i did 25s i'm going to be doing 35s this time hopefully four sets of 12. Let's see how this goes. So I'm still warming up. I usually recommend um, like 
don't ever just jump straight into your workouts where you do your main weights. You want to make sure that you actually gradually increase. Right now I'm doing 35s. That's my working set. But I'll have no weight, do about 10 to 15 reps, and then probably add like a 10, do like eight reps. And then after that, add a 25, and I'll do about three to five reps. And I'm pretty much warming up my nervous system to get to the point where I'm pretty much activated, ready to go to start my main working set, uh, especially if it's cold weather too. You want to make sure that you're getting things activated because when you're cold, things feel stiff, things don't feel as uh, smooth. And that way, or and that might actually lead to injury. So yeah, recommend warming up for any workouts in general when you first start. Music in here is super loud. Oh, and by the way, um, I always add like a noise canceling because the problem is like there'll be a copyright music in the background. So that's why you have those weird like dead silence. But I'm probably gonna try to add some music next time. I'm gonna test this out. I know the goal was to do a higher rep range, but I feel like you can do a little bit heavy on these. But if it's too heavy. <sighs> Okay, he's actually feeling not too bad. Let's do this. Second set. Oh. Yeah. Hey. Oh. Yeah, it's a solid eight. I'm actually really happy how these are feeling with the heavier weights. Yeah, I was a little conservative on going a little bit lighter on these, but the way these feel feels pretty good with heavier weights. I'm gonna stick to eight reps for these. When it comes to rest time, I usually do it by feel. Usually you can kind of tell when you're ready to, to hit the next set. I feel that it's very subjective for everyone. So I think between give or take two to five minutes, let's say, depending on what exercise. Um, yeah, I rest until that burn sensation, or should I say the, the lactic acid burn that you feel goes away. That's when I end up going in and doing the next set. So for example, if I hit my first set and I rest only about a minute and I just go right into it. I don't think I'm going to be able to hit eight reps versus if I rest about two to let's say five minutes, I'm going to be able to hit that eight, eight, eight target number that I'm going for. So I'm losing three reps if I just go one minute rest times and go right back into it. So yeah, resting is very important. This is a, uh, what is it? Set number two. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Look at that stretch. One. Two. Ah. Next. Ah. Eight. Ah. Up. 
Ten. Oh. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't expect to hit ten. To be honest, it's probably because the last set that I did for eight, I didn't rest and went right into it. And see, that's how much of a difference. When you rest a little bit longer, you're gonna have more reps in reserve to be able to hit that set with more reps. I'm gonna to stick to the same weight and try to hit 15, 15, 15. And uh, see how this goes this is for the inner upper back area. I was gonna find an alternative workout for this because like I said, I injured my disc and but so far it's been healed pretty fast, but I'm gonna be very careful on this one and see how this feels. These felt pretty good. Like very, 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 very slight where I could almost feel a little bit of the disc, but but as long as I'm really strict on it, it's not gonna bother me at all. So I'm pretty happy with how it's going so far. <sighs> Fifteen. This will be the first set of four sets of ten to fifteen. 135 pounds. Let's go. Let's do this shit. Let's go. I'm always learning something new. Uh, I've watched a lot of different kind of videos on how to hit the incline chest. And I noticed I always didn't really grow too much volume on here because I was always a big uh, advocate to always keeping your elbows 45 degrees because what happens is you put your shoulders back so you prevent yourself from getting injured and then you're able to go extend down. Your chest is always up front. But what I noticed when you're 45 degrees, you're not really engaging much of these fibers up here and more over here, even if you do on incline. 
And I recently watched a video breakdown where this guy, he kind of applies a lot of science behind it. But to kind of summarize it, it basically, um, like typically you don't want to, when you lay back, there's this like, you kind of arch your back and there's a gap in between. You don't want to do that. Make sure your back is fully flat, even your lower back flat into the press. And when you, when you do lift off, you can still, you don't have to do 45, but slightly not, you know, you don't want to have it where it's literally to the side of your shoulders or so you can actually tear your, your shoulders, but not 45, but about, they call it like 70 degrees, just about 70. And that's when you really could start to feel the fibers engage at the upper chest. So I've been applying that method and, and it's been working, honestly. So, you know, I've been training for over 10 years, almost kind of doing, I say the wrong thing, but actually now focusing on the things that I find my weak points. Now I'm seeing improvement. So yeah, even lifting for, you know, 10 years, you're always learning something new. And the fact that there's always new studies, new uh, methods that come out. So always just be open to learning and never uh, stuck in your old ways. Because uh, you're never going to grow if you're close-minded on new things that come about. See, one thing I really like at the lab is that they got this pretty much lift where, see that? It brings the bar down so I don't have to be in that awkward place where I have to lift off. So this removes that awkward feeling on my shoulders. I love this uh, incline press machine or incline bench. Let's go. <clears throat> Set number two. Up. Oh, 12. Holy. All right, we're doing uh, single lat arm pull downs. Gonna feel the engagement more on the bottom right area and really squeeze on this uh, exercise. So let's get it. Oh shit. Ten. Really stretch at the very top and then squeeze at the bottom. Three. Four. Five. Six. 
Twelve. We were doing last week, I did uh, 30 kilograms. Now I'm doing 34 kilograms. Did 12 reps. I should be able to do 12 as well for this one. Let's go for it. I did 15. So I was always a big proponent of arch, kind of arching the back, bringing the shoulders back, and then pressing. But the issue is when I do that, I'm, I'm targeting more of the regular uh, chest slash decline chest area here, but not the incline. So after watching that video, they basically say you don't want to, you know, do that cave. You pretty much rest flat onto the bench. And then, of course, you don't want it to be where your elbows are at. That's going to hurt your elbows. But this is 45 is all the way down here, 70 here. So we're going to stick to 70 because I used to always do 45 and press it. But now that I'm doing this, I could feel way more activation in the incline. So that's a quick tip there. Okay, we're going to be doing chest support rows. I'm doing 45 plates on each side for 10 reps. But my goal is to do hypertrophy. I'm aiming for the 12 to 15 range. So I'm doing 35s on each side. Let's see how these feel. and a half. Whew. Oh man. Well, pretty good. Pretty solid. So with these, like, you know, you can hit it two ways. You can either hit it really controlled or you can hit it really like 
momentum wise where you just want to get the reps in. Uh, but I prefer more of controlling, but doing like this explosive technique where there's no momentum involved, but you're generating the pull strictly just from the muscle without that extra help. So I guess they call it like the whip where you're just kind of like using that force to help you bring the weight up, which the muscle growth comes from you using the muscles to pull it, right? So I like to pull, control the unit, but it's to a point where I'm like generating enough force where it looks like I'm controlling it all the way through where I don't like to just yank it and it's like being assisted. Some people like to train differently, but I feel like it's more optimal. Set number two, really pay attention to how I generate and hit this exercise, as I mentioned earlier. One. Uh. Uh. Fuck. I'm gonna try to do a momentum on this one. See, that one's 12. You can see that difference, how I use that momentum to help kick it, which I think is good to, to, to do towards the end of your reps, just to get that extra rep. But usually when your body's tired, the muscle itself is super fatigued. And what happens is your rear delt starts kicking in, other muscles come in and take over. And that's not what we want. We want to be able to target just the muscle that we want and be able to track progress. We're doing a quick pump check. That's right. Checking out the physique. Mm. I just met my boy Brian here. First time seeing here. Uh, he also does video and content creation. Yeah. So it's pretty cool how we just kind of clicked right off the bat. Right. And, yeah. Um, yeah, man. So we're, yeah. now we're here. Uh, now we're naked. That's how close we got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we came in a room and got naked. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy how bodybuilding works, huh? <laughs> it does. But yeah, not looking too bad. Look at that tricep. Mm. Oh, there we go. Nice. My side is actually this one right here. I don't know why, like. Mine's is actually the other side too. I, yeah, yeah I, see you know how one side has yeah, a better, one like, side is like just better. I don't know why, like I can't get the, the, the perfect motion. I get it with this side perfectly, so I have to mimic. So, okay, I'm gripping this way. So I have to palm down this way. Okay, so I think this. Yeah, but it just doesn't feel right, right? No, it doesn't. Yeah, it so doesn't. like when I hit it too, how do you hit it? Wouldn't you like lock your finger in like that? So I squeeze and it's like I'm pulling the finger down and I'm kind of like, yeah. So yeah, I, I, I like grab one finger and uh, I just kind of like grip it. Bam. So I kind of like lock. Ah, uh, I uh, lock like that. And it kind of pulls. Boom. Yep. Okay, I like that technique. I'm going to learn something new there. Yeah. And it kind of like, I don't know, maybe it, maybe not, maybe, maybe it's just me, but I feel like it pops out your forearm a little bit more too. No, I like that. I actually like that. I might, I'm going to use that. Yeah. That one's fucking, that one's good. <sighs> All right, let the viewers know how much, what's your weight right now? I'm uh, about 170 right now. 170. 170. So I myself am, I'm at 188. I'm trying to cut down. We're actually talking about uh, competing soon. Wink, wink. Yeah, you, know, you guys might be in for a treat. But right now I'm currently dieting down. Um, trying to get to probably around 180, 182, somewhere around there. Kind of see how my physique goes. Really? Um, I think you would tread down a little bit more than that. Cause... Well, that that's that's like my like fit. Like I don't really have any. And then like to shred down, mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. like I'm like at 175. But then at that point, which sucks, is natural lifters. 
um, you lose a lot of muscle and mm -hmm. you lose a lot of freaking um, strength yeah. whenever you cut down. So that's why I kind of like to, I like my physique, how it looks at like 180, 182. And then like, if I like, if I'm but you're really, really right now, though. 188, yeah. Okay. That's only six pounds though. Six pounds, dude. It's crazy. My fucking what? body. Yeah. My body is crazy like no that, dude. Way. Yeah, no man. No way. <laughs> yeah, bro. I'll, you guys, you, you, you'll see, man. <laughs> you'll see. But, I would think like 175. 170 would that's be like, like my like i'm like, dying and shit like but that's like you got i mean to look good and like shred it on stage I feel oh like yeah yeah definitely stage stage yeah that's oh, but you're talking about just like yeah normal just normal sh normal shred stage weight that's going to be different that's going to be like you know probably like 170s 168 somewhere around I see, there i see okay yeah. Yeah, i was thinking more stage weight oh uh, yeah yeah i'm trying there. to get to that weight and then kind of feel out because i also have um uh what do you call it? Autoimmune, autoimmune disease. Oh, shit. I have uh, IBS. Uh, so okay. with IBS, I actually just got it um, last year. Damn. I got diagnosed with it. So like for me, I can't have like any bread, any type no of gluten, bread. No. no oh. Yeah. So it's like it completely fucked with my whole yeah. like routine that I had before when I used to like diet down. Yeah. So now I'm trying to figure it out how to, you know, get shredded while using this new technique. Um, and not being able to have like, you know, like I said, breads yeah. and like um, right. oatmeal. I can't have like onion, so anything so that has onions. So you're allergic to like gluten and stuff? No, which is the crazy what? part is they That's did a gluten test on me and I you came back negative. Okay. So they were just like, they did a, a colonoscopy on me and everything. And the final verdict was like, oh, you just have IBS. And, Damn. and then the doctor was like, well, I mean, you're pretty much screwed. Figure it out. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, dude. It's it, so unfortunate. Yeah, it's tough. So now it's like trying to find the correct meals that aren't going to blow me up too. Because, mm -hmm. man, like if I have anything that has like uh, beans, onions or anything, it just like blows, uh, just me, blows me up like up. crazy. So like It has to do with something in your gut. <clears throat> yeah, definitely uh, something in the gut. Yeah. There it is. You're in shot right now. There you go. I gotta practice the vacuum. Oh, yeah. Relax the stomach. There you go. Lock up your lock up your hands. There you go. There you go. Chest up. There you go. That's it. Ooh. Fuck, yeah. Back imagine is... imagine when it's gonna be on stage, dude. dude. It's fucking. That's what we have to practice. Is like crazy. There you go. Ooh. That's the shot right there. Ugh. Do a front double buy. Front double buy. Hit him with it. Yes. There you go. Ugh. There you go. Man, that posing really is tiring. Oh, yeah, definitely, man. It definitely have to uh, work on it because if you don't, you're going to be all shaky and, yeah, it's not going to be a good look. There you go. Dude, that's that's your shot right there, dude. Yeah. Dude, hell yeah. Oh man. Hit him with the back pose, bro. Oh Hit yeah, the back. The back. Well. That one I always have an issue with because uh I don't have a gym that like I could see my back and shit. Right. Now I could so, see here, which is yeah. really dope. Yeah, I'll back it up here on that anyway. Okay. There you go. Bam. Money. <laughs> Gotta make sure it's like right there. Right, right there, you yeah. got it. That's it. That's the shot right there. Ugh. Man, now you gotta hit him with the lat spread. Oh yeah. That one was fucking. That one wanna suck. That one hurts so bad. <laughs> if you guys ever tried it, man, literally oh. feel like you're gonna cramp up like crazy, dude. Crazy <laughs> cramps. Oh man. Yeah. That so so that was a pump check, quick posing. And uh, see you guys in the next video. Peace. Peace. <laughs>